All right, thanks to the Defense Academy at Shrivenham in the UK, I actually have the chance to shoot. Uh, this is rifle number 7 EM2 in the original 280 cartridge. I'm really curious about this. 280 is described as an intermediate cartridge, and it is. It's less powerful than 308 or 30-06, but it is still substantially more powerful than the what we think of as intermediate today, namely 556 or 545. So I'm really pretty curious to see how that handles in a rifle that is pretty darn light. Now, we also have a, a non-magnified optic here. And a lot of the examples I've seen of these optics have been really worse for wear. Uh, cloudy, difficult to see through. This particular one is in excellent condition, and it's way nicer than the other ones that I've seen before. Looking through this, you've got this, a pointer coming down from the top, and then three, no, four holdover lines for three, five, seven, and 900 yards, I believe it would have been at that point. So, all right, let's put a couple rounds through it. I'm going to go ahead and lock the bolt open. And when you insert a magazine in the EM2, it will automatically drop the bolt and slightly malfunction. Give it some credit, this rifle's very old and tired. All right, we actually had a, uh, a deformed round in there, so we're going to try this a second time. Put the mag in. This time we're going to put the mag in and just charge the rifle normally. Perfect. All right, here we go. This is semi-auto. Yes, my fire selector on this is here above the trigger and it's currently set to R, repetition, or semi-auto. This is fantastic to shoot. Recoil on this is, this is definitely a heavier cartridge than a 5.56 or like a 4.85. But this has, this is a nice straight line recoil. Goes right into your shoulder, doesn't climb. It's really nice. All right, let's try this. A couple two round bursts full auto. Let's see if I can pull that off. All right, fire selector is up here. We're gonna push that over to automatic. Now, I don't know if this was deliberate or just coincidental, but it's very easy from a firing grip to go from auto to semi. You have to actually adjust your grip to go from semi to automatic, which if it's intentional, which it may or may not be, that would make sense because even a relatively intermediate cartridge like this is still far more useful, I think, in semi-auto than full. What I'm curious here is whether I can fire two round controlled bursts, and uh, if I can keep them all in the target. Let's find out. That would be a no. All right, I had one little uh, failure to feed there, which dented the case. We've decided, given the age of the rifle, we are not going to fire that round. So I have three rounds here. Let's see what a three round burst looks like. There we go. That fired so fast it felt like one. All right, my second cartridge is not quite coming up into the firing position. Let's see if that does it. Remember guys, this rifle is, what this would have been made in 51 probably, which would make it 65 years old now, and has been fired extensively by the school here at Shrivenham. So, there we go, give it a little help. Got two rounds. Let's try a two round burst. All right, so that moved a lot more than on something like a 5.56 five, 
Um, I also had the chance to, I've had the chance to shoot one of the XL64s, which is in the 485 British cartridge. This moved a lot more in full auto than that thing did. Two round bursts with that. I was actually able to keep both rounds on like a 12 inch target at 25 or 30 yards. This, I had one round on target and one round up to the right. Um, while that, that 280 cartridge is, I think, a nice, it seems to be, as far as I can tell, a really nice compromised rifle cartridge. It's not so much a machine gun cartridge from the shoulder. Um, if I had one of these, if I were dictating its usage, for what that's worth, I would say stick to semi-auto. In the lighter stuff, the 556 and the 485 and 545 Russian, full auto can be done a lot more controllably. This one I think is just a little bit over the threshold for effective full auto fire from the shoulder. But I tell you what, in semi-auto it is fantastic. You know, most of the time when we look at guns on forgotten weapons, if they're rifles like this that were potential military service rifles that never made it past, basically past initial testing, there's usually a very good reason. There's usually some horrible problem with the gun that makes it really obvious why they weren't adopted. The EM2 is actually kind of a different story. The overreaching, you know, the predominant reason that this was never actually put into production and adopted, although it was briefly adopted, but the reason was political controversy over what the cartridge ought to be. And really, to be frank, it was U.S. Ordnance Department obstinacy about retaining a 30-06 powered cartridge when this was very specifically designed for a, a lesser powered cartridge. Now, looking back on it today, we can see that that lesser powered cartridge is really what should have been gone with in the 1950s, but for political reasons that didn't happen. I think, as far as I can tell, this rifle really is a fantastic, excellent rifle, certainly in 1950s context. and. It's hard to say anything other than we would have been ahead of ourselves if this had been adopted, rather than going through a couple decades of 308 Winchester 7.62 NATO as a service cartridge before finally acknowledging that that rifle, real that cartridge, really is more powerful than an infantry service rifle ought to be, and going to a lighter cartridge, which we have today, going to something like the 280, I think would have been a really intelligent step forward at that time, and it's too bad that it wasn't. In total, only about 55 of these were ever made, and it's a shame. I'd love to have one of these. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure it'll never happen. But it was a fantastic experience to get to shoot one. Uh, big thank you to the, the school here at Shrivenham for giving me the opportunity. If you guys ever have the chance to check out an EM2, absolutely don't miss it. Thanks for watching.